I'm just a guy who loves Disney and has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm File91E and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E and um, well, we're here. 301. It's hard to believe. I just want to thank everybody who, uh, uh, you know, supported me over the years. We've done 300 of these shows and we're on 301 now. And um, I'm sorry that I didn't get a lot of uh, notice before doing my live 300th show. Uh, it just kind of happened and it was like the best time for me to do it. Uh, but thanks to everybody who showed up that night and everybody that's watched it since. Uh, it's hard to believe that we've done 300 already and uh, that we're working on more than that. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy to see, you know, how this stuff has grown. So thank you to everybody who was there and uh, all the, uh, the extra ones who uh, stayed way after. I enjoyed reading your comments. That was, they were quite nice. So thank you very much. Uh, now I'm going to give you a heads up on this uh, because I didn't give you a heads up on the 300th live show. I'm going to be doing a Star Wars marathon where I watch all of the different Star Wars movies before I go and see Star Wars The Force Awakens. Um, one of you or somebody had mentioned, well, you should do what Shia LaBeouf did and record yourself uh, watching the show. Or, you know, watching the movies. I can't, rec I can't, you know, broadcast the movies or, you know, show the movies on here because that would be a violation of copyright. But I can show me, right? I can, uh, you know, show me. And uh, um, in the background, you, you, know, you know, you should hear the movies. And I'll have my little microphone right there so you can hear me mainly. But uh, um, so that's what I plan on doing. I plan on uh, getting up real early that day and watching the 13 hours worth of movies. Uh, before I get to, um, I, you know, before I leave to go see my Star Wars Force Awakens show. Uh, so it'll be probably from around 7 to, uh, or 6 to, you know, 8 o'clock at night, because I want to go see the, um, the 10 o'clock version. So I'm not sure. It's going to be start between 6 and 7, and then, uh, you know, run all the way until about, you know, until it ends. And then I'm going to go see Star Wars Force Awakens and then come back and probably give you my you know, take on everything. But, uh, yeah, so if you want to be a part of that or just join randomly throughout the day, I'm not expecting everybody to watch, you know, right along with me, but because I'm sure you guys have lives that day. I'm actually, it's going to be December 17th because I'm seeing it, uh, seeing an early screening you know, you know, before the midnight showings everywhere. So it's going to be December 17th that I see Star Wars. So the, the, so that day, December 17th, if you want to randomly come over to Final Nando on, uh, on YouTube, you, 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 you should see a live broadcast of me, uh, at least just watching the movie, you know, talking, kind of just good, doing whatever. You know, randomly you'll, you know, you, you know, you might see me eat lunch and all that stuff. But, you know, either way, it, sh it should be cool. So I'm really looking forward to that. So, awesome. Star Wars Marathon, December 17th, all day until, you know, Star Wars Force Awakens at night. So, that should be cool. Uh, but, yeah, that's what's been going on with me this week. Let's get right to the news. Now, um, the first thing I want to talk to you about today, uh, in, in this news, I didn't really write too much down aside from what it is. Um, this has been going around on a lot of the uh, Disney message boards and whatnot. I, I saw this on Reddit the other day, and I recently, it was, so it was brought to my attention uh, via Facebook. Uh, there is a Disney dating app out there now, or dating website. For all you Disney maniacs out there, so if you're Minnie looking for your Mickey or if you're Donald looking for your Daisy, you can go to mousemingle.com and uh, hopefully find, you know, somebody that you can, uh, you know, love and all that and they love you uh, and they're all Disney fans. So that's pretty much the only prerequisite for joining this, ad, you know, this website is that you are a Disney fan. This is a... Uh, Kind of like a, an OK Cupid or something like that, or an eHarmony for people who, you know, specifically like Disney stuff. You know, if you're a, a Christian or whatever, you can go to Christian Mingle. If you like farmers, you got you know Farmers Area or whatever it is. 
But the fact that there is a Disney dating website now is pretty amazing. Now, I, I, I initially thought that this was kind of ludicrous because, uh, you know, I don't know. I just think it's kind of weird or I thought it was kind of weird. But the more I thought about it, there are a lot of people out there who are Disney fans who, you know, have uh, you know trouble navigating through the OkCupid OK website or all, all those different websites trying to find Disney fans. It's hard to, you know, say, hey, I'm a huge Disney fan in your profile that people don't read and then you go on dates and realize you're not a match and all that stuff so if being a disney fan is the is a person or or is a big thing in the person that you're looking for check out uh, mousemingle.com it's getting a lot of traffic uh because of the you know the added uh you know uh you know word of mouth stuff and uh so the, i think now they're still putting you on a waiting list so that you can create your you know your profile and everything i have not created a profile i don't plan on it um, you know, uh, I'm not looking for anybody right yet. You know, I don't, I just not my deal right now. I'm not looking for a Mrs. File 91 E. Uh, you know, I don't think I'd find her on there anyway. It's just, it's weird. I'm a, I'm a weird guy and not very desirable in that aspect. I'm a good friend and I'm a great Disney friend. That's great. That's what it is. But, uh, I'm just not really into that right now. So yeah, mousemingle.com. If you're into that, check that out. Disney has filed a construction permit for a new fireworks launch area at Disney's Hollywood Studios. A new site uh, uh, is located outside of the park across Walt, a World Drive on an area that is currently undeveloped. The site is in line with, the Hollywood, with Hollywood Boulevard and is somewhat similar to the Magic Kingdom setup with a launch site in the North Service area outside of the park. So that's pretty cool. I think as part of the uh, upgrades to Disney's Hollywood Studios, they are, they're going to want to have a nighttime show, fireworks show, so that should be interesting. Cool stuff there. Speaking of fireworks, according to a post on the official Disney Parks blog, uh, the Symphony in the Stars, a galactic spectacular nightly, nightly fireworks show, will begin on December 18th. Uh, it was originally expected to open in early January 2016, but it now appears to be launching in time for the busy holiday week, and just one day after the premiere of the new show uh, for Star Wars The Force Awakens ticketed event on uh, December 17th, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the new nightly fireworks spectacular will feature music from the entire Star Wars saga, including the new Force Awakens movie. So that's awesome. Awesome cool stuff there. I can't, I would love to be able to go down and see that, but I can't, so I guess I have to watch it online. The construction walls are down at the new Jedi Training Trials of the Temple stage at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Themed to an ancient Jedi Temple, the new experience will give younglings a chance to face Darth Vader and a new villain from the Star Wars Rebels TV show, Seventh Sister. So that's pretty neat. Uh, they'll be doing a lot of stuff there. It looks really cool and uh, check it out if you are going down there. Uh, the Star Wars launch bay is now officially open at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it's looking. And at, uh, I was looking at the new photos, and it looks to be in line with what's there at Disneyland. Really cool. Uh, it's it's pretty awesome how they you know you know changed everything, and they have all those uh, those um, you know different uh, stuff to see. You know you know exhibits. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So check out the Star Wars launch bay at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Oh man, there's a lot of Disney's Hollywood Studios new, uh, news this week. Good lord. Disney's Hollywood Studios has a new character dance party, and it's indoors, air-conditioned, and it has a place for parents to relax while the kids dance. Now, 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 see, now that I found out that it's a kid's thing, I can't go and dance there. I look weird. Sunset Showcase is the new flex space uh, theater at Disney's Hollywood Studios and is now home to Club Disney. You'll find it just off Sunset Boulevard with entry from the Rock and Roller Coaster Courtyard. So that's pretty cool. Pretty neat stuff there. Uh, Club Disney. Yeah. I like that music, but I can't go dance with a bunch of kids. That's just not going to happen. Anyway, that's the news for this week. Let's get right to the reviews. All right, guys, the first thing I want to review for you today is the Astro Orbiter. Now, what these guys say the Astro Orbiter is... A very mild midway type thrill ride, minor attraction, go before 10 a.m. or during the hour before the park closes. Not worth the wait, two stars. Um, Astro Orbiter. There's some history there and before I get into my opinions on it, let me give you a little bit of history. This is located in Tomorrowland at Disneyland Park and this opened on uh, May 22nd, the current version opened on May 22nd, 1998. This is one of the few rides that has been around since the opening of Disneyland. And uh, it's gone through a lot of changes, lots and lots of changes. Uh, 
There's one in each of the uh, different Magic Kingdom style parks around the world. So Disneyland Paris, Euro, uh, uh, you know, Tokyo Disney, that sort of thing. It's kind of a staple for Tomorrowland. It's one of the things that you look for, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, it's just, it's tomorrow-ish. It's very futuristic, you know, you, know, you, know, you know, with the rockets and everything. But let me give you some history. Like I said, there are many different versions of this. The first version was uh, in 1956. This was the, uh, you know, the, the, the first spinner ride in there. It was known as the Astro Jets. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, you can see it's just it's a you know, very basic sort of thing. Just kind of spins around. It really hasn't changed too much uh, aside from the theming and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's really neat. Uh, in 1964, the Tomorrowland Jets had changed, uh, the Astro Jets changed to the Tomorrowland Jets because of a new sponsor. Uh, I think it was like uh, United, and United was going up against this other thing, and this other thing had a Astro something in their plane name or something like that. It's like the Astro plane, and they were like, we can't have Astro be there because people might confuse it with that. So change it to something else. Okay, we'll call it the Tomorrowland Jets. That's perfect. And that's what they did. And then in a couple of years, there was a the huge Tomorrowland, or, you know, a, a renovation. Tomorrowland kind of ceased to be Tomorrow-ish after a while, and they needed to update it, so they did. In 1967, the Tomorrowland jets became the Rocket Jets. That's kind of an oxy, you know, not, or, or it's kind of redundant, Rocket Jets, I don't know. Um, and they actually moved this to the top of the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover there. Uh, that's pre that was pretty cool because you took an elevator up and down and uh, it was pretty much the focal point and the centerpiece of uh, Tomorrowland and you would see it from everywhere in the park and you'd see it spinning around you're like oh cool They're really up high and doing all that. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you know, I can't really you know complain too much about that then They were uh, you know, they renovated Tomorrowland again in 1996 or 7 and uh, 1998 they changed it to the Astro Orbiter and uh now it was, uh, you know, going to go back on top of the Tomorrowland uh, or, or or the People Mover, but it was too heavy because of the new stuff that they added onto it, the new theming. Um, it's actually themed to the exact same sort of Astro Orbiter thing that they have in Disneyland Paris. It's not called the Astro Orbiter over there. It's something crazy, you know, very French. But uh, um, yeah, you know, so they brought that over, and it looks very futuristic right now, kind of retro futuristic, Jules Verne futuristic. That's you know, you know that sort of thing. And they moved it to the uh, the entranceway of Tomorrowland. So when you go go into Tomorrowland, the first thing you see is this very futuristic sort of thing. The Astro Orbiter stands right there, uh, and that's where it stays to this day. And uh, when I went there, it was pretty cool. It was a nice day. I didn't get on it. It's not one of the rides that I wait to get on because again, it's not really that you know worth the wait to me but uh it does look good and it makes for a great picture especially when it's all lit up at night and uh really cool very it fits well with the tomorrowland theme that's why it's not totally useless it is a very it fits well you know kids can get on it and it's still futuristic and it works um so yeah that's pretty much what it is you just hop in this uh this kind of rocket jet sort of thing and you start spinning around and then you can go up and down and up and down or then go up and down and up and down and make your parents puke. You can do whatever you want, kids. It's Disneyland. It's your land. That's what it is. Um, but aside from that, that's pretty much what it is. It's, you know, it looks nice. It fits well, you know, theming-wise in Tomorrowland. But as far as a ride goes, you really, if you're an adult, there's no reason to really get on it. You take a picture, take some video of it. Ooh, look at Tomorrowland. Move on to Star Tours or something like that or to Space Mountain. So, what am I going to give the Astro Orbiter in Disneyland Park? I think I'm going to give this just two stars. I would give it a one, but I like the theming and I like the fact that it's there. I think it's one of the more necessary rides in Tomorrowland because it's a kid's ride and it's very futuristic and it just looks nice. It's one of the original rides that Disneyland had and uh, the fact that they keep it updated and keep it going like that is very cool. Uh, it's still pretty much the only spinny ride that they really need. Uh, you know, I don't like the magic carpets of Aladdin or anything like that, but it's, this is really the only spinny ride that they need. Um, you know, kids like it. It's one of those rides that you know, parents are going to have to stand in line with. Uh, there's not much to it, uh, you know, as for adults or anything like that. If it was still on top of the people mover thing, I think that would have been, a, you know, a little cooler. I don't know if it would have pushed it to a three, but, um... It still was pretty, you know, is pretty neat. It looks nice, and they have it right there, prominently centered at the entrance way to uh, 
uh, you know, Tomorrowland in Disneyland Park, and I think that's really cool. So yeah, the Astro Orbiter in Disneyland Park in Tomorrowland, two stars. And now, a random Disney fact with File 91E. The lake in Disney's Hollywood Studios version of Fantasmic is only about one foot deep. And that was a random Disney fact with File 91E. Alright guys, the next thing I want to talk to you about today is the big Mickey's Fun Wheel. Alright, now what these guys say Mickey's Fun Wheel is a Ferris wheel. Major attraction go in the first 30 minutes the park is open or just before closing. The world's largest chicken coop may induce motion sickness two and a half stars. I don't know if I agree with that rating because it does seem there other you know there's other things that this does and it and what it promotes. So but whatever I'll get into that in a minute. This is Mickey's Fun Wheel. It was known as the Sun Wheel, and that's when it opened on February 8th, 2001, with the rest of uh, Disney's California Adventure. Uh, but then when they renovated that whole California area into Paradise Pier, the Paradise Pier area, they, you know, they renovated it, made it more of a Victorian sort of uh, thing, that theming. The, on, 2000, uh, on May 4, 2009, they was rechristened the Mickey's Fun Wheel and uh, had a whole new paint scheme and everything like that and it fit much more better in, uh, in that Paradise Pier sort of thing. When I went to Disney's California Adventure, the Paradise Pier section of Disney's California Adventure was one of my favorite things. It actually felt like I was there on a boardwalk on an Atlantic Coast, you know, Victorian era boardwalk, you know, with the roller coaster, even though it was a steel coaster with the Ferris wheel, even though, it, you know, it was a Ferris wheel with a lot of uh, extra, extra stuff, all the different shops and, and uh, you know, the, uh, the Midway Mania, it just worked. It was a great, great theming, uh, you know, or, or, you know, it was a great job with the theming and uh, I just thought everything worked with it. Now, um, this is, this Ferris wheel, it is a Ferris wheel, it's 160 foot tall. Uh, and has some of uh, the sliding gondolas. This is the you know the big difference between this uh, 16 of the 24 gondolas are fixated on the interior and they slide uh, What I mean by slide is is uh, it just uses gravity You know you're it is very firmly held on and as you're going up as soon as you get to a point where it kind of slides down it you know oh, you slide down and you rock back and forth a little bit and uh, it gives you a little bit of a thrill uh, especially being that high up now motion sickness bags are in each of the gondolas uh, so if you get a little uh, pukey you can uh, use them to uh, hopefully contain the pukeness okay yeah now you do you can choose which one to ride there are two lines you oh, the ones on the outside uh, pretty much just stay put in there. It's just a regular Ferris wheel. It's a, like a nine minute ride. You get to go around. It's nice because you get a good view of the park. You know, awesome photo ops and things like that. But you can choose the, uh, the, you know, the sliding ones. And uh, good luck on that if you are, you know, if you're susceptible to motion sickness. So be aware of which one you're getting on. Okay? Be aware. Be aware, people. Now, what was cool was after the Paradise Pier renovation, they added a lot of exterior lights to this. They took out the sun in the middle, put the Mickey face, and they added a ton of LED lights and all that stuff. And um, it became more a part of the uh, Paradise Pier night show, the World of Color, than it had been previously. Again, it had some lights, but it wasn't too spectacular. But when they made World of Color, and he had everybody just sitting there looking across Paradise Pier, they said, what can we do? We have to add all this stuff they did you know they added lights to uh you know uh california screaming and all that stuff just to kind of add to the show and uh, one of the coolest things ever is the uh the pre-show to world of color you actually can play kind of like a uh memory type game uh on the on the wheel they have a website and everything nathan played it i think i reviewed that once i'm not sure but uh yeah i think i reviewed it when i reviewed world of color but uh, it's a very fun little thing. It's little. It's a free added thing that they didn't have to do, but they did anyway, which makes it, you know, quite spectacular. And uh, it just looks nice when it's all lit up. The, you know, with the fun wheel, the roller coaster, everything behind it. It looks just perfect. And uh, that's why I really, I really dug Mickey's Fun Wheel. Now, did I get on Mickey's Fun Wheel? No, I hate heights like that. I don't like Ferris wheels. It's just a personal thing. Um, it looks fun, and I know a lot of people enjoyed it, 
Um, but I just don't like Ferris wheels that go that high. I just can't deal with it. I don't like heights that much. Um, so I didn't get on it, but it's, it, it's stood out to me as one of the biggest things in the parks. And, you know, it, it's very iconic. And again, when it's all lit up, it looks great. And uh, that's just kind of why I dig this. I really like it. So what am I going to give Mickey's Fun Wheel in Disney's California Adventure? You know what? I'll give this three. Yes, I didn't get on it. It's mainly because I was scared, not because it's not a fun ride. It's a nine-minute ride, so you get a you know a good view of the park. Uh, you know, it's a good long view of the park, and the fact that it offers the two things—the sliding version and the non-sliding version—I think that's great. It's something for everybody. It's a Ferris wheel. It's fun. It fits well in the Paradise Pier theming, and I just really enjoy it. Uh, I know you know they only gave it two and a half. I'm giving it three. Um, because I, I I think it's a it's a you know it's a good attraction and if you're into Ferris wheels this is something that you really want to check out if not and the line short still get on it you might actually enjoy it but uh, if you don't like Ferris wheels I wouldn't get on this one it's a big one it's big I'm scared so yeah Mickey's Fun Wheel Disney's California Adventure and Paradise Pier three stars check it out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews. Again, if uh, anybody wants to join me for the Star Wars Marathon, uh, December 17th, all day, you can just stop on by here on YouTube, and I'll be you'll see my gargantuan figure probably either stuffing my face with popcorn or watching Star Wars movies, because that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah, it's a go for work for it, too. That's because that's how I roll. I plan on seeing Star Wars at least three or four times that weekend. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so yeah, if anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I want people to go to Disney World or Disneyland like today and have a great time. Go to mousemingle.com too. That's pretty interesting. You know, get all your, you know, you can find a date. Go to date night with Disneyland. Go on a date at Disneyland. Have some fun. Maybe not get on the Astro Orbiter, but have fun on the, on the Mickey's Fun Wheel. Hopefully not puke on each other. You know, that could, uh, you know, that'd be good too. If you are going to Disney World, be sure to go to ours.net, touringplans.com, wdwmagic.com for all your latest and greatest Disney news. WaltDisneyWorld.com is good too, along with Disneyland.com. I think people, for whatever reason, either make fun of me for saying this or like me saying it straight from the horse's mouth. Good stuff there. Now, I didn't do one, oh, I'm sorry, micechat.com for all my Disneyland news as well. So, micechat.com, check that out. Now, I didn't do a Where in the Land. For like a couple weeks so i'm just going to kind of mix stuff up i might throw in some old disney world footage as well might kind of rehash some of that so we're going from disneyland and disney world now so mixing it all up it's getting all mixed up all of it okay good stuff so i'll see you guys next week for another disney news and reviews and guys we're in the land i might this week bye